two wing Zen noting. And this is um, this is a practice where we're gonna we're gonna have three phases, three different pra Zen noting practices we do one after another in succession. And the purpose of this practice is to explore what in the second turning or Mahayana Buddhist tradition are called the two wings of wisdom and compassion. And I think historically it's, 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 it's useful to understand why this was considered to be a big deal and why, why is it not in the first turning in the early Buddhist tradition. And, and part of the reason as I understand it is, you know, the first turning, the early Buddhist texts and teachings all seem to focus more on the development of world transcending wisdom, you know, on discovering this freedom, which is unconditioned, which is unborn, um, which tr uh, transcends um, the conditional realm, you could say, and thus is a kind of freedom that is independent of con conditions. Um, pretty profound stuff, actually. Um, and um, when the goal of the path of meditation is conceived of in this way, it does create uh, a split. It creates a new kind of duality between the world of form, otherwise known in that tradition as samsara, and the formless, um, or that which transcends form, otherwise known as nirvana. And it can be seen as the goal to get out of samsara and into nirvana. Well, that's, that's an interesting goal because now you've got this new duality you've got to deal with and contend with. Anything that's samsaric is bad and everything that's nirvanic is good. Well, what is nirvana? Well, I can't tell you, I don't know what it is. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> that's kind of how it's described by everyone. So it's like, well, okay, well, that's weird. Um, and and I, I think that tension did eventually fester probably is my guess and, and some very wise people who discovered the unconditioned freedom probably at some point realize, wait, this unconditioned freedom isn't a thing. It's not an experience. It's not something. And thus, why am I thinking about it as being opposed to everything? Why am I thinking about it as that as something that's transcending everything? I could easily also conceive of it as that which is everything or the source of everything or the manifestation uh, of that. So, So here we get the emergence of what's sometimes called non-dual wisdom and that it's the non-duality of form and emptiness or as said in the heart sutra one of the most important um, second turning or zen texts form is emptiness emptiness is form form is no other than emptiness emptiness no other than form um so there's a sense that Wisdom it doesn't exist independently of the conditions of our life. Um, reading from the uh, Chan master Gua Gu in his book, Silent Illumination, I read over this recently. He said, in Buddhism, when intrinsic awakening is experientially realized, it's called selfless wisdom or prajna. Because this wisdom operates freely, without self-referential obstructions, it responds skillfully to the needs of sentient beings. This is called great compassion. Um, I love that. I thought that was a beautiful description of the relationship between wisdom and compassion. Um, when this intrinsic awakening, meaning that this awakening is already our nature from the second turning point of view. It's, it's our, it's your Buddha nature. It's who you already are. Um, at the deepest level, it's, it's what we are. Uh, when we realize it, um, ironically, this can be who we are, but we can not see it because of self-referential obstruction, a being absorbed in our, in our own story and our own narrative and our own perception of the world and kind of reifying or ossifying that as we do, uh, we lose sight of our basic nature, wisdom. Um, but when we don't lose sight of it, when we're, when we're uh, freely functioning, freely operating without grasping, then our, our natural state is naturally compassionate. And I, I'm, I, and I'm not just suggesting this as a philosophical point. I'm suggesting this is like something you can see, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. Like when you're not 
self-obsessed or when you're not fixated on some on your own suffering isn't it so that you naturally respond to the to what's around you and do so pretty well you know it's like something someone needs something like we're there um and when we're not kind of stuck on ourselves it's it's easy to do that it's natural uh, as bernie glassman the uh, zen teacher said it's like the left in the right hand you know helping each other it's not like there are these two different things uh and that to me is the beauty of this this view of compassion it's interdependent the recognition of interdependence is at the root of both of these wings we see we're not separate from each other um when we think we are separate that's delusion and sometimes when we think we're all one that's also delusion <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, it's tricky, but we're going to um, kind of explore this more deeply. In Zen, they say not two, not one. Not two, not one. So um, practically speaking, this is a pretty straightforward practice. Um, we're going to spend about 10 minutes per phase um, working with these different perspectives, the, the two wings and then the two wings together. So the first 10 minutes we'll be Zen noting as wisdom. As wisdom, I'm seeing clearly. As wisdom, I'm letting go of mental rehearsing and just showing up right here. As wisdom, I'm aware that I haven't given all the instructions yet. And that's okay. <laughs> It'll come. <laughs> um, and then for the, for the next 10 minutes, and here I'll just ask um, one person in each group, uh, someone in, in the group to just pay attention to the time. And as we count down, as you get to 20 minutes left, someone can say, as compassion and begin to shift into the second phase, the second wing as compassion. I'm softening, I'm still seeing clearly as compassion. There's great sadness and tenderness. As compassion, I feel heartbroken by the recognition of my humanity, my limits. As compassion, I forgive myself for all the ways that I've caused myself and others harm. And then in the final 10 minutes, we're gonna shift from compassion to compassionate wisdom. So bringing the two together, the apex, um, or you could say flapping both wings at once. And, um, and here I've just, compassionate wisdom sounded like a good phrase, but feel free to use whatever phrasing helps you connect with this. You could say wisdom and compassion or compassion and wisdom or wise compassion, whatever works for you really. But here I'll just use compassionate wisdom as the example. As compassionate wisdom, I feel energized, alert, and soft and relaxed. As compassionate wisdom, I let go of distinctions and just flow with reality as it is. As compassionate wisdom, I notice self-referential thinking and anxiety, and I accept that this is part of being alive. Okay, so this is just a little demonstration of the practice um, and I want to suggest here like we have been with all other Zen noting practices that we take turns to give each other some space 
and that we use a breath or two um, to describe what what it is that you're where you're experiencing, you're noticing, and that you feel free to use whatever words you like to do that. Freestyle. <laughs>